Short answer, yes, but Hey there, it's Elena, your friendly nuclear physicist. And today we are discussing probably the most commonly asked question that nuclear physicist gets. Is it dangerous to work as a nuclear physicist? Working as a nuclear physicist can be dangerous if safety measures are not properly taken into account. So therefore, if proper training hasn't occurred, if a person doesn't really know the materials that they're handling or how to handle them properly, protective gear needs to be on, and if that is not happening, then of course, working with nuclear materials can be very dangerous and hazardous for your health. The most important thing before even stepping foot into a nuclear lab or any lab for that matter, is to actually have proper theoretical knowledge of the materials you're going to be used, how they need to be handled, know exactly their behavior, their physical characteristics, what are the problems that can occur with them and how you should properly be able to handle the problem if a problem was to occur. However, when safety measures are taken, working with uh, nuclear materials and as a nuclear physicist is actually pretty safe. Therefore, one should first of all be properly trained from experienced people in the lab or in the field that one is about to work and get all the necessary information about <clears throat> the materials that are going to be handled, the different, let's say, liquids, chemicals, and uh, what are their interactions with all these materials. You need to be aware of uh, proper handling of those, especially liquid waste, which you would typically think you might just pour into the drain. That's not the case. So one has to know how to use it. You need to know the, of course, radioactive materials you're using, because in a nuclear lab, you don't just handle uranium or plutonium or radioactive materials. You handle all sorts of chemical materials that have, let's say, chemical hazards for your health. So radiation is not the only issue you need to be concerned with. Uh, secondly, it is very important to have proper gear on when handling those materials. For example, the basics is a lab coat which needs to cover all of your clothing and the full length of your arm all the way up to, let's say, the wrist. And uh, that is, first of all, in case of a spill or something that might let's say kind of burst that doesn't go on your clothes or even on your skin even worse and will go on the lab coat first off will be easily detectable if uh, it's colored and uh, not transparent and second of all will protect you your skin and your clothing from any further contamination uh, secondly gloves need to be worn at all times when you handle uh, either radioactive material or material that are chemical or any other way dangerous for your health especially for your skin because you're going to be touching them with your fingers and uh, preferably lab coats and gloves should be overlapping meaning that the wrist area should not be exposed at any point because it is actually a very dangerous kind of spot that things can fall on like dust or i don't know radioactive uh, elements materials particles or for example chemicals like i don't know nitric acid that can actually cause irritation on your skin or even burns Thirdly, uh, face covers should be worn if necessary, for example, face masks. And this also depends from, for example, if you're handling something that a medical mask would do the job, you should wear that. But when you're handling something that is more airborne, that actually travels with the air and can go inside your, let's say, uh, while you're inhaling and inside your lungs, then a proper, let's say, plasma looking mask should be used in those cases, as, of course, uh, glasses goggles for um, any kind of spill or, as I said, any kind of, let's say, dust that can go up in the air and accidentally go inside your eyes should also be, uh, let's say, protected from that. Uh, therefore, you need to, of course, cover all of the parts of your body that can be exposed to these hazardous materials. And uh, as we said, includes at least gloves, mask and lab goggles. So in the case you are handling materials that are of extreme, let's say, high levels of radiation that you cannot handle from basically just touching them. And then in this case, you use properly uh, glove boxes that are not only glove boxes from which you can use, uh, let's say, a thicker glove that will not basically penetrate and that will not contaminate your hands or any th things like that, but is also leaded and uh, the walls of the glove box itself are thick and they are either cement and lead or the combination of both that protect whatever radiation is inside to go on the outside of the room and the workers and the nuclear engineers and physicists that are basically handling these materials on the outside. So as we mentioned, people who work with uh, materials that are of high uh, radiation level 
need to properly be shielded from that material either through uh, walls that are cemented and leaded and from an example for example for the body wearing something like leaded aprons would help to basically keep all of that radiation away from uh, the body and from contaminating you in any way. Another important thing that needs to be worn especially in the nuclear lab are lab shoes. What are those? So lab shoes can either be basic regular shoes that you just use for the lab so in case they have a contamination or a spill on them or on the sole then you don't transfer that outside the lab you just remain it just remains inside uh, the lab area itself however there are shoes that are also leaded so these shoes actually protect from high levels of radiation or let's say gamma radiation that can penetrate your feet as well as the rest of your body and that uh, can cause um, issues so in this case you need a proper let's say more specially made shoes for nuclear applications and um, both as i said need to be used depending on the activities you do in the lab there is no need to over protect yourself if extra protection is not necessary first of all it is probably costly to buy things that are of higher protection if you don't need such protection in your lab or if the radiation level is kept to a minimum for example if one is handling only naturally occurring radioactive elements like natural uranium, for example. Uh, and therefore, you don't need to overdo it because you are over, let's say, complexing your work itself because wearing all of this gear and working and doing some precision work in the lab with those gear is actually very hard and it needs a proper training to even know how to wear this equipment, use the specific gloves while doing the precision work you need to do. And as I said, it also associates with a higher cost, which is not necessary. Plus, it adds the image and the idea that what you're doing is highly dangerous and it has to be highly contained and maintained and treated in a very special and different way, which might not be the case and might only help into propagating the bias that nuclear physics and nuclear engineering and working in a nuclear environment is actually so very dangerous that nobody can approach it without an excessive amount of gear. So now what happens if things don't go the way they're supposed to go? When entering a nuclear lab or any lab for that matter, you are not only supposed to prepare for the best case scenario because not everything in the lab is butterflies and rainbows. Actually, more often than not, things break down in the lab, accidents happen, people do mistakes. So one needs to be prepared for the worst case scenarios as well. It's not only enough to know how to properly handle things to know the, let's say, physics and science behind them and to know how to do your work in a well-regulated environment. But you also need to know what to do when things go bad. So in case of an accident in the lab, it is important first off to inform the people who are lab managers, uh, the lab supervisors, or anyone who is responsible basically for the lab needs to have the information that an accident has been occurred and that the way you're going to handle the accident itself. It is important if the accident relates to radioactive material for the territory to be marked. For example, if there was a spill of radioactive, let's say, powder uh, somewhere, then that territory needs to be marked. And everyone is aware that outside this territory, the area is clean. And inside this territory, the area might still be contaminated. So no one is uh, touching it, walking over it, especially if it's on the floor. Uh, of course, once you mark the territory, you are going to try and clean it uh, the best way you can. And depending, of course, on the accident itself, the material that you had, the cleaning goes accordingly. If it was, for example, a powder, you might want to gather the dust particles that you can uh, with a tissue or a paper while, of course, wearing all the protective gloves and equipment that is necessary. Uh, gather everything that is visible, everything that is seen clean as best as you can the area and if you don't know what to do next don't go for it and just wing it and do things anyways better ask a supervisor or a lab manager who know how to handle it properly and do everything up to the point that you know what to do it is important not to stress yourself not to really let's say uh, lose it in the lab because things like this do happen and not necessarily on a daily basis but it's not very improbable that accidents will happen so compose yourself, take a minute to think, take a minute to realize what is the material you have spilled or you have had an accident with, how you are supposed to handle it, talk to the people responsible and move forward with handling it. In conclusion, working as a nuclear physicist can be very safe and actually similar to 
working as a police officer or a firefighter or any other job that needs you to adhere to some basic safety protocols. Uh, it can be similar to that. However, as I said, things can go south, accidents can happen, and if one knows how to handle them properly, then you should have no issues when it comes to safety as working as a nuclear physicist. Write in the comments down below what other scenarios you would want me to dig into and explain when it comes to working as a nuclear physicist or in the nuclear lab, in the nuclear environment in general, and I'll make sure to explain them thoroughly and tell you the bad things that can happen and how one should handle them in those kind of situations, as well as let me know if you would be interested for me to have a story time and tell you about the craziest things that have happened to me working in a nuclear power, working in a nuclear lab. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below with your suggestions for a future video. It's been Elena, your friend nuclear physicist, and until next time, see you soon.